Hello there, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have a quick video with two cards, so get comfy and let's get crafty. I purchased this Brutus Monroe play, Playful Plaid Pattern Paper Collection to create masculine cards with. It is something I struggle with, but I have kind of figured out a plan of attack for this paper. So the first thing I did was trim down some cardstock strips at a quarter inches wide, and then I took one of each of the patterns in the paper pack and cut some quarter inch wide strips of that as well. I have two card panels that are three and three quarters by five inches, and they are cut from white cardstock. And my plan is to adhere the pattern paper strips at an angle on this card panel, and then every other strip will be black cardstock. So the first time I laid out this card, I, I made a, I played around with how I wanted to lay it out without shooting that footage because I didn't know exactly how I wanted this to go. And I just put the pattern papers together and it was a little bit busy and um, not necessarily visually unappealing, but not super appealing either. So I decided that when I shot this video, I would go ahead and put some black cardstock in between each of the pattern papers. So these little strips of pattern paper are one quarter inch by six inches long, which is perfect to hang off the front of a card panel this size. And the cardstock, the black cardstock is probably like five and a half by a quarter inch. Um, I just used a quarter sheet of cardstock because that, what, that is what was in my scrap paper stash. I am using glue, liquid glue, for a couple of reasons. My tape runner is slightly wider than a quarter inch, so it would hang off the edges. And liquid glue gives you time to adjust and finagle and slide that paper into place. However, we already know, if you're not new to my channel, you already know that liquid glue and I are frenemies. So I have a baby wipe off to the side where I regularly wipe my fingers. And even in doing that, I still have glue all over my fingers while the paper sticks to it. <laughs> okay, so we have sped up this video footage quite a bit. Um, it is not the most exciting footage for a card video, but I didn't know how much to edit out. I, I kind of went back and forth with um, speeding it up like even more than this or just editing it, editing it out um, to do the two cards, including the the washing my hands time and the answering the phone time and the chasing down the right colors of cardstock for my card base time was around a 50 minute raw footage. And that's, you know, way too long for this kind of a YouTube video for sure. <laughs> but also, um, yeah, this is really exciting. So my plan of attack with this, these two cards was to adhere stripes of pattern paper in one direction and at an angle, but not exactly a symmetrical angle, and then turn around and go off um, another direction at another angle, if that makes any sense at all. So now that I have the pattern papers all the way glued down to one end, I have to trim those off. I did pull in my guillotine trimmer for this first trim. After that, I just use a pair of long scissors. When you have, um, he says hanging off two edges like I do. It's a little hard to get it in your card, in your um, trimmer straight and not, and right up to the edge. So after this part, I went ahead and used my scissors at super fast speed. Um, I'm not sure why I left this at real time. Probably just so you could see what I was doing. Okay, so here we are going to go at the, uh, approach the second angle. I decided that I needed to have a blue, or sorry, a black cardstock strip in between the next piece of pattern paper that will create the beginning of the next angle. All right, so I am just doing the same thing at a different angle. So we're gonna chat about something else for a minute. And the thing I wanna chat about is why do masculine cards seem like they're so hard to create? I mean, in theory, when we create a card for somebody who we, we love, we know, we like, or, you know, if we were commissioned, we already know something about this person, whether it's um, because we know them personally or because the person who asked us to create the card has given us information about them. We know what they like. We know what their favorite colors are or their patterns are or their sports or their pastimes. And I get hung up on creating masculine cards. 
I don't know why that is. I guess in my mind and for real in my paper stash, the things that I have tend to lean more toward children, first of all, because I have a lot of them and more feminine cards because flowers are a lot more fun to color than animals for me. Or I do have a couple of really cool car, um, vehicles. Those are kind of fun to color. But most of my stamped images that I would color are florals and critters, I guess. Or yeah, I don't know. I don't know. See, I'm thinking about my stamp collection now. I'm thinking, well, I probably have just as many other things as I have florals. But regardless, I digress. Um, for whatever reason, when it is time for me to make a card for somebody I love that I want to make a more masculine card for, my brain kind of freezes. And I don't, I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know. So I would like you, when you are watching this video, to leave me a comment below and tell me if you struggle with masculine cards. And if you do, what you have done to overcome that. Um, if you do not struggle with masculine cards, I would like you to leave me a comment with your stamp eyes. What are the things that you do um, when you are creating masculine cards? I think my hardest cards are for teenage boys. And that's pro probably because I don't have teenage boys yet. My oldest boy is 12 and a half and he's about as 12. Oh my 12 and a half year old boys. They're like eight year old girls. They're a lot. They're extra. <laughs> okay. So we are halfway through the video. We are working on the second card base and our second card panel. And I am using leftovers. Okay. Um, the only reason I knew I could do two cards was because when I made my original, my original, um, when I was playing around with this idea, this pattern, the first time I cut the same size strips and I had enough for two cards then. So the first card definitely has more strips on it than the second and more of a color variation. Um, the second card in both instances, um, really did kind of just use the leftovers. And that's probably because I can't throw pretty paper away. So let's talk about that for a minute. What is it about pretty paper? Oh my goodness. I am so addicted. I have tons and tons and tons of pattern paper. And you know what I did a couple weeks ago? I went to Michael's and bought more. I know I saw somebody do a YouTube video with the new recollections pad that I just had to have. So I went to Michael's. I did not buy that pad that I saw in the video. I bought two different ones and there's a big 12 by 12s. Um, yeah. What is it with card makers? and pattern paper. It's like, we love all the pretty things. We do. We love all the pretty things. All right. So I did not line this up well, this particular card. And I have a little teeny tiny corner that should be black cardstock, but there's so much glue on my fingers at this point. I can't even get the black cardstock to adhere. <laughs> that was a struggle and trimming it off and not having it just peel off was an even bigger struggle. All right. So now we are going to the second half of the second card. And you can see that my angles are the same general direction. However, they're taking up a little bit less of the actual card front. And that's just again, because I'm using scraps because throwing away pattern paper, pretty pattern paper hurts. I don't know. Let me know. Do you find that a problem in your craft room? <laughs> I, I have had to teach myself over the Oh my goodness, 12, 15 years I've been making cards and creating with paper that if it gets to a small enough size, like I've given myself specific dimensions. If it gets smaller than this, I cannot keep it. That's a legit thing for me. <laughs> and it was a rule I had to create for myself because I was keeping all the scraps, all of them. Okay. So you can see it's taking me a little bit longer, even on fast forward to get the second section filled in, or the, I guess it's the fourth section, but anyway, because my scraps are fewer and farther between. And I did have to take a break here for a minute and trim down my card just so that I had enough long pieces left to finish. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. So once we have the pattern paper in, then what? I think that's the the second part of my, my hang up with masculine cards is that what sentiment do you put on it? 
I have lots of dyes that say things like hello beautiful or love you lots and and you know we have lots I have lots of these stamps but um I struggle with finding stamps that are again a masculine typeface or a, a less frilly looking sentiment okay once I had all the um, pattern paper strips in I did decide to go ahead and put another piece of black cardstock right along that bottom um, to kind of it was a little gap ink that I didn't like as the angles approached each other so I covered that up okay so back to sentiments I have this really old Stampin' Up! stamp set and I keep it because it's super generic like it says sending you good um sending good thoughts your way that could be a birthday card that could be a sympathy card it could be you know a whatever card so for these two cards, I picked out two sentiments, one that says make a wish and the one that says sending good thoughts your way. And I am stamping them with my Misty stamp positioner on a piece of white cardstock. It is the same cardstock I use for the card panel. So they will be the same color because all white cardstocks are not created the same or even equal. I have stamped these with Versa Claire Nocturne Black ink and I use that black ink with sentiments and solid sentiments specifically because you almost always get a fabulous stamping in one go. I am trimming these down with my guillotine trimmer. I have gotten better with finicky cuts because I still need blades for my Fisker trimmer. I know how long have I been complaining about that and I don't have them still. Okay so now that my sentiments are stamped and trimmed I need to adhere them to a piece of cardstock just to give them a little bit of a border. And these are the cardstock colors for my card bases as well. Um, I don't know that this is an actual need, but they felt a little bit naked. And I felt like um, mounting them onto black cardstock was going to be too blendy. <laughs> I was afraid they were gonna get lost, like the black cardstock would get lost. Um, so once I have these all trimmed out, I will go ahead and adhere them to the front of my card panels with foam tape. So I have this huge roll of 3M foam tape, which I need to replenish. It's getting down to the nitty gritty. And I am just adding some foam tape to the back of my sentiment um, pieces. I say sentiment strips, but they're not really strips. And I'm going to adhere those sentiments right where the pattern paper meets at that angle. Now I could have put these sentiments anywhere, but that's just where it seemed the most logical. For my card bases, I have two pieces of 11 inch by four and one quarter inch cardstock. I'm scoring it in the middle at five and a half inches to create a top folding USA2 size card, which means the finished size would be five and a half by four and one quarter inches. Once I have them scored with my score board and bone folder, I will burnish that fold with a bone folder to make sure that they are nice, crisp folds. Then I am going to use my ATG tape runner to add the card panels to the front of the card. Now I did notice on this there was a little corner that needed to be trimmed and good thing because it's way easier for me to line up my card panels when I'm looking at two, when I'm looking at it sideways. I don't know why that is, probably because I can see the top and two of the sides at the same time. So I know that my margins are at least visually equal. And all that is left is to add the white copy paper to the inside of my cards so that there is a clean, crisp, place to write a message. Okay, so super fast video, or at least it was like super fast motion video. <laughs> um, let me know in the comments below what you struggle with when it comes to creating cards and, and are you addicted to pretty paper? Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you have a fabulous day. Do me a favor, leave me a thumbs up. And if you have not done so already, subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Bye. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and watching my video. I have linked a couple other videos here for you to watch as well as a subscribe button. If you have not done so already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel and if you know somebody who would like it, 
please feel free to share. Have a great day.